Oh, yes, I'm the great pretender. Pretending that I'm a good singer. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade, and welcome back to my whole darn CD collection. This is chapter 16. I had to look it up. Uh, because, yeah, this this uh, ridiculous exercise has been going on for quite a while, uh, and I've got a big collection. We're chapter 16, and I'm only at the P's of the vocals category. I've still got the instrumentals and the fringe categories, the compilations, and the soundtracks, holiday albums, blah, 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 uh, still left to do. So uh, I hope you're enjoying the ride. And, uh, yeah, I actually don't I wasn't keeping very good track of recent arrivals, so we're not going to have a recent arrivals thing. And honestly, I'm, uh, I, I don't know if I told you this or not, but about a month ago, I did a pretty good uh, CD pruning, a, a pruning of my collection, the stuff I just don't listen to anymore, don't have any connection with anymore. And I ended up getting rid of almost 150 CDs, uh, well over 100, I know that. I don't know if it was 150, but uh, yeah, so in that respect, Pretty much all the other 15 chapters of my collection are at least a little bit obsolete because there's probably stuff in there that I don't have anymore. So what can I say? Uh, you know, that's the life. My CD collection is a revolving door constantly. Um, not that I don't buy, you know, not that I buy stuff thinking I won't enjoy it. I, I'm just, you know, I, I just kind of, I'm like a sponge. I like to check out as much music as I can and, uh, you know, some of it sticks and some of it doesn't. Uh, but anyway, yes, and in each chapter I show you 90 of my CDs. Uh, guilty pleasures, not so guilty pleasures, the whole bit. Uh, I'm, I'm not hiding anything from you. Uh, and I'm such a stickler for the 90, I don't know why, that um, starting off today is the last one in, in the letter O. So I don't know why I just didn't put an extra one in there and finish the last chapter at the end of the O's, but that's my uh, little obsessive-compulsive brain for you. Anyway, Ozomatli is the last entry in the O's. This is a Latin band, kind of like Los Lonely Boys and uh, those other one, those others, uh, Los Lobos as well. But yeah, they're, they've got a kind of a funky style to them. I don't know why I don't have more than this one CD of theirs, because uh, they, they do some great stuff. And one of my favorite songs on here is Who Discovered America? Controversial topic, I know. Uh, and But it, they, they do a great uh, version. And, and it's it's partly at least in Spanish, so I can understand the lyrics most of them anyway, but uh, oh yeah. a great band. If you like some funky Latin-based rock, check out Ozomatli if you haven't yet. Great stuff. And now on into the peas. First one we have here is Martin Page, uh, and the album is In the House of Stone and Light. Uh, family friend named Jeff lives down in Las Vegas. Uh, he sent me a, a small package of CDs Oh, it's been a few years ago, I guess. And this was one of them. I, I mean, I was aware of this guy. I had never checked him out. I like the, I like this guy. He's kind of, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a little bit of a kind of a mystical... Again, I, I'm not great with descriptions, but it's the only way I can ta uh, describe it is kind of a, a bit of a mystical sound to it. Um, uh, kind of like, kind of like Enya, I guess, but you know, in that kind of ethereal sense. But there's more of a beat and a rhythm to it than than Enya's music. It's it's not easy, you know, easy listening or new age stuff. It, it's pop rock, but it's got that bit of a uh, mystical and uh, ethereal quality to it. I guess that's how you pronounce it. I need to stop uh, with the explanations. It's there. This video is going to be four hours long. Anyway, uh, but yeah, check it out if you haven't. The, the the title track in the House of Stone and Light is really good. So. And that actually gives a good representation of what's on the album. Next one up is Stephen Page, a former member of Bare Naked Ladies. This is his, don't know if this was his first uh, solo album, but very good stuff. Um, the, the ladies are not quite what they used to be before Stephen Page left. Uh, I, I do kind of miss him in, in the lineup, uh, but this is, this is a good album too. But they've, you know, they've evolved, and uh, the, the Bare Naked Ladies have evolved, and uh, they're continuing on without him respectably, I think. Just, you know, just their early years were my favorite. Now we're coming into, I believe, a complete studio album discography. Brad Paisley. I, uh, how I got into him was a bit of a 
convoluted story, uh, my sister brought to my attention uh, one of his videos that was kind of done tongue-in-cheek style, and William Shatner was a part of the video. Being a Star Trek fan, that kind of roped me in, and uh, I checked out his music a little bit more and a little bit more, and before we know it, he is one of my favorite, probably my favorite, contemporary country artist. So uh, yeah, this is his debut album, Who Needs Pictures? And we've got part two, followed by Mud on the Tires. And, yeah, uh, and then Time Well Wasted. He's He's got a good sense of humor in his lyrics. And uh, no, Fifth Gear is his next album. This next one holds a very special place in my heart. I will talk tell you about it at some point. Uh, play the guitar album. It is mostly instrumental. But yes, I, I need to do a uh, album diaries video about this CD. So, yes, I need to resurrect my album diaries series. I, I made this whole deal about, uh, you know, stealing it or uh, from Noah or, you know, he officially passed the baton on to me and I haven't done a thing with it two years later. So I need to get off my poop or get off the pot, in, in other words, and, and do some album diaries videos. Then we have American Saturday Night, followed by This Is Country Music. And what well, interestingly, um, he features uh, Don Henley on one of the tracks on this one, and another one featuring Clint Eastwood. So yeah, that's kind of an interesting uh, selection of guest artists here. And then perhaps his most controversial album, Wheelhouse, with, um, oh, what was that song? Shoot. Oh, Accidental Racist. A lot of people just trash that song. They hate it. But, okay, it, it may not have gotten the message across as delicately or as effectively as it, sh as it should have, but I, I like the song. I like the intent of the song. But, uh, yeah, Wheelhouse, it's a good album. And coming up on his two most recent albums, Moonshine in the Trunk and Love and War. And I, I really like this album, too. Um, and, yeah, 2012... No, 2017, and he hasn't done a new album yet. I don't know why. Uh, Mick Jagger, John Fogarty, Timbaland, of all people, are, are guest artists on this album. So yeah. he's, He tries to diversify his uh, sound, bring in other influences, which is pretty admirable. Then we have Robert Palmer with his album Gold, or it's, it's a compilation, you know, in the Gold series that the Universal labels, family of labels puts out. Two discs full of uh, hits and otherwise. Then we have a uh, indie rock band that I really, in well, I really enjoy. Um, I pared my collection down to just this one album, their debut. Uh, their other albums just didn't quite stick enough with me. But uh, Parachute is the name of the band. Losing Sleep is their debut album, and it's great. It's excellent. Their debut major label album. They might have had an indie release before this. Then we have Paramore. Uh, yeah, two two paras in a row, Parachute and Paramore. And this one was uh, a gift from a good friend of mine whom I met through YouTube. So I, love the, I love the friendships that I've made through YouTube. Can I just stop and say that for a second? I love, I love these guys, you know? Well, I don't know what my life would be without them, seriously. A lot more boring. Uh, then we have Ray Parker Jr., uh, the very best of in the Playlist series. Uh, and, of course, it has Ghostbusters on here. It also has The Other Woman. Uh, you can't change that. Um, a Woman Needs Love Just Like You Do. So he, he had a pretty, amount, pretty good amount of hits in his, uh, his heyday. Then we have Dolly Parton with her classic album, Jolene, featuring the song that Whitney Houston would, would later make famous, I Will Always Love You. And uh, Hot Take, I think I like uh, jo uh, Dolly Parton's version better. I think I do. I'm not totally sure about that. And then, the very best of Dolly Parton in the playlist series. I've got, oh, probably a dozen of these playlist uh, titles. Then we come to <laughs> one of my not-so-guilty pleasures. It's a group called The Party. Uh, there was a ver version of the Mickey Mouse Club that was on in uh, the late 80s, early 90s. And that is how, let's see, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, and a couple of others um, got their start as Mouseketeers in 
uh, in the uh, Mickey Mouse Club. And this was a uh, pop dance pop group that came out of uh, these. These are five members of that uh, Mickey Mouse Club from the '90s. So, so they started their own group. So, the party. They have some good. They have some good catchy songs on here. It's ear candy, yes, definitely. Uh, what is oh, uh, the song "I Want to Be Your Boyfriend." I discovered that song uh, through these guys. I thought it was an original, and later on, I realized it was a song that was done by a group called. Crap. Cannot remember what their name is now. Uh, I'll have to look at. I'll, I'll put it on. Uh, well, yeah, I'll see if I can remember to put it on text here in the uh, video, but. Uh, the Rubenus. That's who it was. I, I knew it was going to take a second. And then uh, I thought there was another another cover on this one, but yeah, that was a, their self-titled album. Then they had another album, In the Meantime, In Between Time. And uh, let's see. Uh, Peace, Love, and Understanding. That is, of course, the um, Elvis Costello song that also I assumed... We, gotta remember, back in the in the late 80s, early 90s, my knowledge of music was very limited, so I assumed that that was uh, an original by the party, but no, it was an Elvis, Elvis Costello song. I did, however, know that My Generation was a song by The Who, and that I knew that, so I knew that was a cover. But uh, We all start somewhere with our musical knowledge. It always starts at the very bottom. Remember that. And then we come to a... Uh, Mm, 80s inspired dance ish pop group called Passion Pit. Uh, it's their album Manners. And, uh, and the one that started me to uh, really liking them Gossamer, a gift from Noah, my good friend Noah. The song uh, Take a Walk is uh, very significant to him, and therefore it and this album are significant to me as well. So, it's an, another. Thing that will it will never never leave my collection. A uh, reminder of my good friendship with Noah, and their um, most recent album, uh, Kindred. Yeah, here it is, that one. And so, have they released an album since then? I can't remember. Then we have uh, Mandy Patinkin. He is an actor as well, but he's also uh, spent a lot of time on Broadway. And so, this is an album of show tunes that he sang, uh, sang and put out. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is all you know stuff from Broadway and Hollywood musicals. And then the only other Mandy Patinkin album I have was um, from my sister's CD collection. That's one reason why I bought his self-titled album. Uh, this one is called Kidults. I love the title, and this is one of the albums in my entire collection that most embodies the spirit of my sister, I think. And... Uh, uh, he he also does some show tunes on this one as well, like uh, "If I Only Had a Brain." It's a it's actually a medley of the "If I Only Had a" uh, all three songs from the Wizard of Oz kind of melded together in a medley, and he actually sings them each sings each segment as uh, a character with a different voice, which he does very very well. Uh, I mean, you would have to hear his version of "If I Only Had a Brain" to to see how effectively he does that. He's great at it, and. Uh, Lots of other, um, most of the other songs on here are children's songs. Uh, Singing in the Bathtub, The Ugly Duck Duckling, A Tisket, A Tasket. So, yeah. And lots of great stuff that uh, evokes the feeling of childhood in here. Great album. I, I really enjoy that one. I think of my sister fondly when I listen to that. Then we have Les Paul and Mary Ford. This is uh, an album of selections from their box set, which I don't have. Um, yeah, selections from the Legend and the Legacy box set. So yes, a great selection of uh, good old-fashioned uh, early country and uh, pop uh, hits by the father of the electric guitar, basically. Then we have uh, another indie rock uh, act that I don't remember how I picked them up. It was probably because they were on a label, the record label that one of my favorite bands of all time, the Connells, were on. So I just kind of for that reason, I picked it up, gave them a try. the 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 group was called Pay the Girl, and this is their self titled album. I really enjoyed this one. It's it's still one of my favorites. Uh, one of those albums where pretty much every song on it is great. Uh, Beverly is one of the great song, uh, really good songs. Uh, All You Are is another fantastic one. See if this is on Spotify because if you like uh, indie rock, oh, let's see. 
maybe a, kind of a bit of a, uh, well, this is going to make it sound like they're bad, but it's just, uh, just for descriptive purposes only, a bit of a watered down Foo Fighters. You know, just a, a milder sound than, than Foo Fighters. Uh, in Between is another great one. Uh, I'm Not Like You. But yeah, I mean, it's like, see what I say. The whole track list is great. So if you can find Pay the Girl, if they're on Spotify, I would recommend giving them a listen if you like that indie rock kind of sound. Uh, then we have an artist that I picked up because one of the songs on here was the title song to a TV series that I really enjoyed. Kendall Payne is uh, her name. And this is uh, Jordan's sister is the name of the album. This is her debut, or at least her major label debut. And the song Supermodels was the title song to a TV series called Popular, which was, I believe the show was, uh, it, the, the showrunner was also the guy who did, was it Ugly Betty? A, a show that was much more popular several years later uh, is the, the, the guy that uh, also ran Popular, the TV show. Popular was a great satire of the social structure of high school. So I would recommend it if you can find it. On, it's probably somewhere on streaming services. It only ran two seasons, I think. And then uh, here we have another, excuse me, another Not So Guilty Pleasure. This might be the Not So Guilty Pleasures uh, chapter of my Hold On CD collection. They're called PC Quest, and uh, these guys were from Oklahoma, I think. But uh, yeah, two brothers, uh, Greg and Chad Petrie, and a couple of uh, friends. I uh, can't remember what his name was, but he played the drums, and uh, she, yeah. I, th I think all four of them, or at least three of them, shared lead vocal duties. They all traded off on lead vocals. But uh, yeah, pop and er early 90s. Uh, this is from 1991. Early 90s dance pop stuff. Very cheesy probably by now, uh, but it's, as I said, it's... Um, uh, it's a not-so-guilty pleasure for me. And, uh, yes, uh, Chad Petrie, this guy here, would eventually go on to form Shiny Toy Guns, an electropop group, uh, several years later. So I got a little connection there. Uh, so, so yeah. Not sure. Yeah. You, you wouldn't know any of the songs by because they don't do any uh, covers, except on their sophomore album, uh, directions. They do a cover of Kathy's Clown, the uh, Everly Brothers song. They do that. They, they do a pretty good job on that one. And I thought they did a cover of another song, but I cannot find it. But anyway, uh, so yeah, not bad. Um, one of the things that's a little bit cringy is Chad uh, at the time was uh, really fond of and worshipped basically uh, Axl Rose from Guns N' Roses. So he kind of does. Basically, it does an imitation of Axl Rose in some of his, some of the songs on vocals. So, what can you say? We've all had our less glorious times in our lives. You know, we we're, we've all done stuff that we're maybe a little ashamed of at some point. So, anyway, that's neither here nor there. Here we have Carlos Pena, and this guy was the winner of one of the Latin American Idol uh, shows, and this is his debut album. Con una canción, with a song. Uh, it's, all, it's all in Spanish, uh, but he's a good singer, very good pop singer, and one of the collection of uh, international idols that I have picked up over the years. Then we have, I think this one was in a bargain bag, CeCe Peniston with her album Finally, and of course it has uh, the title track, which was her biggest hit, I think. And uh, yeah, some good uh, early 90s. Yeah, 1992 um, R&B dance pop stuff. Very good stuff. And then we're coming into a uh, four-album run of Michael Penn. Uh, this guy is uh, the husband of Amy Mann, and I believe he is Sean Penn's brother, Sean Penn the actor. Uh, this is his debut album, March. And one of these, and I think it was Free For All, was in a bargain bag. And so that's how I found out about uh, Michael Penn. Gave him another, uh, gave him another listen on a couple of, the, of their of his albums, and enjoyed them. Uh, Resigned is his third album, and we have his fourth album, MP4. So there you go. Uh, yes, he's. I have to say, he pretty much has gotten better and better with each album. I don't know if he's put out any more albums 
uh, since this one. But funny story, I found this one at a Goodwill store, but it's it had a Skips sticker on it, so it was originally from Skips. So, yeah, that that's kind of a thing that when you you know if you buy CDs from thrift stores and basically anywhere else around the Eugene Springfield area, if you buy enough of them, you're going to run into a one that came from Skips and had a Skips price tag on it. That's how much of a part of the community Skips was. So there you go. Then we're coming into a pretty good run of Pentatonix albums. Uh, this one is the Japanese edition of uh, that collects their Volume 1 and Volume 2 albums. There's the, the Obi overlay. And yeah, 20 tracks. Uh, their, one and, their EPs, Volume 1 and Volume 2, plus a few bonus tracks. And then I also picked up uh, PTX Volume 3. And I also have their self-titled album from 2015. Yeah, 2015. And uh, Volume 4. And I think I'm missing one. Uh, I can't remember which one it is. And this is their uh, latest album of original songs, The Lucky Ones. So, yeah. I like Pentatonix, as if you couldn't tell. And then coming up, this guy, he's really interesting, uh, a great artist. This is just one of those one-shot albums, I think, or I think maybe he's put out another album since then. It was just a long time before he put out another album. Frankie Perez. Uh, this guy is um, Poor Man's Son. This is the name of the album. And I really enjoy this one. This one is kind of a... He's basically a Latin John Mellencamp, essentially. Uh, some, some great, like, Heartland rock. Uh, I think he grew up in the L.A. area, so it's kind of got an L.A. vibe to it. But, uh, yeah, it's got, like, 19, 18 tracks on it. So he packed this album full. It's a great album. Not a lot of uh, duds on this album. Not a lot of filler. It's that good. So, uh, so yeah, if you, find, if you can find it on streaming, if you like kind of like that uh, rock with a bit of a Latin thing to it, uh, I would recommend that. And switching from rock to uh, folk pop, I guess. Uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Uh, this CD was in my sister's collection uh, in these times. This was, I think, their first original album after a very long stretch of uh, not doing any albums. Uh, but yeah, just them playing uh, their, their classic folk melodies. Great stuff to listen to. Yeah, And then I also have the very best of Peter, Paul, and Mary. All of the big hits on here, Leaving on a Jet Plane, uh, Lemon Tree, If I Had a Hammer, Puff the Magic Dragon, of course, uh, This Land is Your Land, Blowing in the Wind. They were one of the great folk pop groups. They pretty, I think they really brought fo uh, folk music into the mainstream, I think, perhaps more than any other artist. Then we have, now this is an artist that it's taken me a long time to get into. I actually have three of his uh, albums, his first three albums, picked them up on CD. I have not listened to them yet. That's why they're not in here in this chapter. But uh, Tom Petty, I guess his uh, solo album, Full Moon Feeder, F Full Moon Feeder, <laughs> Full Moon Fever. And for a long time, this was the only album of his that I had. Don't know why it's taken me that long to really check him out. Well, actually, that's not true, because I do have his two-disc um, Greatest Hits collection. So, And I don't know. This this one might be superseded by uh, the the three new uh, well the three his first three studio albums, which I just got. So we'll have to see. And so yeah, I got those two and his uh, live album from last year, uh, Fillmore, nineteen ninety seven. Yeah. So yeah, Tom Petty is growing on me. And then here we have an artist that. Uh, might actually be slightly shrinking on me. Uh, I'll explain in a few minutes here. Uh, Madeline Peru. This is her first album, Dreamland. She is a jazz pop artist. Really enjoy her stuff, but I haven't listened to a lot of these CDs in quite a while. Uh, her sophomore album, Careless Love. Next album, Half the Perfect World. And we've got... Bare Bones, and Standing on the Rooftop, followed by The Blue Room, 
and I might be getting rid of some of these uh, previous CDs because I have a two-disc uh, best of set, uh, the very best of the best of metal in Peru. Keep me in your heart for a while, and this is a excuse me Japanese edition. There's the OB strip there, and uh, it is two discs. The uh, domestic version of her greatest hits album is just one disc. So, uh, so yeah, if I have all this stuff. I'm kind of seeing less of a reason to keep uh, all of her previous albums. I'm going to keep a few of them that I really, really enjoy. Uh, but the one album that she's put out since then is called Anthem. And this one was put out in 2018, I think. Uh, so that one's really good. So yeah, very, very good artist. It's just, you know, it's the, one of those things. It's like, you know, how much do I want to keep albums that I almost never listen to, you know? Anyway, uh, next up is a power pop group from the early 2000s, late 90s, that I enjoy. They have not done anything, anything in quite a while. They're called Phantom Planet, and this is their debut album, Phantom Planet is Missing. Gotta love the cover art on this. Uh, this is a building in Los Angeles, I think, or a, I think it's a parking garage uh, in the shadow of a building, as you can see there. Great cover art on that one. And uh, their follow-up album, The Guest fantastic power pop uh, and uh, they are most famous for the song California which was the theme song to the uh, drama series the OC that was on back in the 2010s 2000s so uh, yeah. <clears throat> and these are the only two albums of theirs that they've that I have they've put out a couple more since then which I don't have and then we're coming up on another American Idol winner I believe uh, Philip Phillips this is uh, debut. The world from the side of the moon. Yes, his song "Home" is perhaps a little overplayed. Well, it, yes, it was overplayed. Let, let, let's not mince words here. It was overplayed. Uh, good song, yes. Was it good enough to justify uh, the fact that we heard it pretty much everywhere? I don't think so. Uh, anyway, his sophomore album "Behind the Light." And I heard. What is the song that I heard? It's on the next one. Yeah, um, Behind the Light is his sophomore album, and his most recent album, Collateral. And just the other day, I heard Miles, uh, the song Miles, on this album, on the music at a restaurant. And uh, I had to Shazam it, because, hey, that's a good song. And I realized it was Philip Phillips. It's on an album I already have. So, yes, good stuff. And I don't know if he's released another album since then. Uh, 2018. I'll have to look him up. That's the problem with liking so many artists is you lose track of who's released an album when. And, uh, yeah. Oh, gosh, we're only about a half an hour in. This is going to be a uh, one of the shorter chapters, even though I'm still doing 90 CDs like I always do. <clears throat> now, here we have here we have a drink of water first. Excuse me. Sorry that I'm making the camera shake so much. Here is a CD single. This is the only thing that I have by this artist uh, because I don't think they ever put out an actual album. No, I think they actually I think they did, but I've never got, been able to get it. Uh, maybe uh, one one of these days I'll um, decide to go hunting for it. I just haven't. Um, they're called Fix. Uh, P H I X X is how you spell their name. They're basically a boy band. A boy band. Uh, the song is called Strange Love, and I really really enjoy the song. This is one of those songs that. And I should maybe do a video at some point about this. Songs that are just so good that I think they would have been hits in the States if they'd been, you know, if they'd been given the chance. I don't think the song was ever released to radio or anywhere in the States. But uh, yeah, Strange Love is just a great song. Uh, so yeah, maybe at some point I will check out and see if Fix ever put out an actual album. So Then we have... Edith Piaf. Uh, I got this one. This is one that I got at uh, my last trip, I think, to FYE uh, earlier this year. A two-disc set of her 30th anniversary uh, collection. It's lots of great songs. One of the uh, original French chanteuses. Uh, the the first lady of French song, basically. is uh, She's just world famous. Now, I have a few albums in my, in my collection that I have two copies of. And this is one of those just because of, uh, for, for this, in this case, it's because of the inserts. 
I don't know why. I just, I like the inserts on the promo edition uh, more than I like the inserts on the retail edition. Uh, this is a guy named Landon Pig, and this is his debut album, LP. And, you know, front cover, it's pretty good, pretty nice. I do like the back cover because it's, uh, the uh, names of the tracks are done in like a, a Pictionary style. So, uh, yeah, just very, just something very different, uh, different scheme for the cover art. Uh, and but then I found, I can't remember where I found it, uh, the promo edition of the album. Now, see, I love the front cover picture of, of this, uh, you know, the promo version. The back, I, I like it also, but then it's kind of like, it looks more like most of the other releases out there. So you can, I'm sure you can, you understand what I'm talking about. So, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe at one point I will take this out and in, and slip it in front of the cover for this one and just get rid of this one. I don't know. Maybe. I do like the Pictionary schema here, but then this is easier to read. I don't know. When you get old, you kind of, uh, I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Uh, pink. And yes, you saw this one also in my uh, in my Portland Hall video earlier this year, or her uh, greatest hits so far, uh, in a jewel case, as opposed to in the hardbound uh, book that it's usually it's available in the states in. This was an Australian release, I think. The the copyright stuff is so darn small on these, cannot read it. I think I need I need to see the. Uh, eye doctor and see if I need to update my eyeglass prescription. I need to do that. And then her latest album, Trust Fall, one of, one of the very few new releases that I picked up so far this year. And April is, we're at the end of April. And I've only picked up a few. Uh, but yeah, good album. Not great, but uh, yeah. Then we have a few albums by Pink Martini. They are an Oregon-based group. They, uh, I think they're headquartered in Portland. Uh, but, of course, this one is called Hey Eugene. I don't know if they're talking about the city of Eugene or or a man named Eugene, or maybe a woman named Eugene. I don't know. But, yeah, they are a very lively and interesting group to listen to. Typically, on their albums, they sing songs in, like, four or five different languages. So that that's one thing that just makes their albums very interesting, very unique, uh, and uh, just a great, a great ensemble group. To listen to. I don't know why I don't have more of their albums. I only have three. Uh, get happy. Don't you love the cover of this album? It's just it's just a cute cover. I like it. And so yeah, this is the group. It's kind of a nebulous collective of artists. And one of these guys is actually a uh, commentator on NPR, or he's he's like an, an NPR. Uh, current affairs uh, cor uh, correspondent or personality. He's got a like a radio show on NPR, and in his uh, in his spare time, he sings with Pink Martini. Kind of an interesting uh, interesting diversity of uh, interests there. Uh, and then my favorite of their albums, at least so far, is Dream a Little Dream. This is a collaboration between Pink Martini and the Von Trapps, who are the grandchildren of. The Von Trapp family made famous by the movie The Sound of Music. And uh, there they are on the back with the front man for Pink Martini. And the rest of these kids are the Von Trapps. So, very, this was a very, very fun little album. Dream a Little Dream is one of my favorite songs of all time. And of course they do a sparkling rendition of that. So, Yes, I, I need to uh, check out Pink Martini in more detail. I've, I've been neg neglectful in that. Then we have, I believe, my friend Noah gave this CD to me as well. Plain White Tees, uh, their album Big Bad World. This is the only album of theirs that I have, but I really enjoy it. So I might, at some point, um, investigate some of their other stuff. And then we have Ben Platt. Uh, he is an actor and uh, singer, obviously. And he's also done uh, stage musicals as well. Uh, this is his debut studio album, Sing to Me Instead. And his sophomore album, Reverie. Uh, very, very good stuff. I did not, I frankly, I did not care for the movie. What was the movie? I can't remember what it was. Uh, yeah, just uh, did not connect with it. Uh, frankly, he was way too old to play a high school student. So, uh, 
Yeah, Dear Evan Hansen. That was a movie. Yeah. Wasn't crazy about the movie. Sorry. Uh, then moving on to uh, The Platters, a 20th Century Masters Millennium Collection, The Great Pretender, uh, Twilight Time, Smoke Gets in Your Eyes, Only You and You Alone, You've Got the Magic Touch. I mean, you kind of forget how many great hits they had from back in the 40s and 50s. So, good stuff. Then we're moving into one of my uh, world music-inspired groups that I have. They're called Poi Dog Pondering. Uh, most of the members, most or all of the members, are Hawaiian. So uh, an interesting um, territory, or, well, yes, it's a state, but, you know, territory, you know what I mean, that um, culture is what, what I should say, that you don't see a lot of musicians from, kind of like uh, Native Americans. You don't see a lot of Native American uh, artists either. So, And then their sophomore album, uh, Wishing Like a Mountain and Thinking Like the Sea. I love the title of this album. Oh, just, I, just, I just love that. that uh, when poetry combines with nature, you know, nature and mysticism, kind of, you know, you know what I'm saying. Then we have uh, their third album, Volo Volo, or their third album on the Columbia label, that is. And I used to have another one or two albums uh, beyond this, but in trimming my CD collection last month, uh, <clears throat> yes, just, you know, these these three were enough, I guess. And then we're coming up on uh, the Pointer Sisters. We have, uh, what is the name of this one? Special Things. And this one, th yeah, these two, this one and the next one. Yeah, uh, Casey and the Sunshine Band. I got those two remasters at Music Millennium. These, the Pointer Sister, Sisters ones that I'm showing you, I got in uh, Starship Records in Tulsa, I think. But yeah, uh, they're put out by uh, BBR Remasters, I think is the name of the label. Yeah, again, my glasses. Um, yeah, the, the same label put out the Casey and the Sunshine Band ones that I just mentioned. Uh, but yes, yeah, some uh, a bonus track on this one. Yeah, this album has the song He's So Shy, which was one of my favorite Pointer Sister songs. And the bonus track on here is a song called Moving On. And funny thing, I was looking at this in Starship Records in Tulsa, and I saw the bonus track, and I had not thought about that song in 30, 35 years. But as soon as I saw the title of the song, the melody came right back to me. I don't know if that's ever happened with any of you guys, but uh, I had the 45 of He's So Shy, and the B-side of it was Moving On. And I love that song as much as I love the, the A side. And so I, I just, that was just so weird that, you know, after all those years of completely forgetting that a, that a song, song exists, you see the title and it comes right back. It's so very freaky almost how that happens. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, moving on. We have their follow up album, So Excited. Of course, it has uh, the title track, I'm So Excited. And I think. That was, oh, American Music is another one of the songs that was a uh, uh, popular single off this one. And this one has a couple of 12-inch remixes as bonus tracks. Uh, I'm so excited. And uh, If You Want to Get Back Your Lady is the other B-side extended version. So yes, got those. And uh, this other one I recently bought. I can't remember where I bought it. Uh, this is an, another BBR remasters, but it is actually in a uh, two-disc digipack rather than the super jewel case with the rounded corners. Yes, this is Breakout, their, uh, well, I was going to say their Breakout hit album, but they, they were a popular group before this, but this one just really took their fame to a next to the next level. This, of course, has uh, Jump For My Love, I'm So Excited, Neutron Dance from Beverly Hills Cop, I think. And, uh, yeah, just so many big hits off this album. This was their blockbuster album. Fantastic. And yes, I have all those three albums, and I'm still not sure if I want to give up their greatest hits. Um, this is... I guess it doesn't have a, a subtitle. It's just the very best of the Pointer Sisters. It's a two-disc set. Uh, yes, they had a lot of uh, a lot of really good songs that weren't on these three albums. So yeah, I've, I think I've made a wise decision in keeping hanging on to this one. But yes, a great group, a great, great R&B group. One of the best of all time, in my opinion, from the 70s, the Pointer Sisters. 
Then we move on to a group that is uh, quite a bit different from the Pointer, Pointer Sisters. Poison. Yes, I never thought I would, you know, want to have a two-disc set of a a hair metal or metal band. But uh, yeah, this these guys had so many great hits. Uh, nothing but a good time. Uh, Every rose has its thorn. The bat, the classic ballad, and uh, oh, I guess they did covers of "We're an American Band" and "Rock and Roll All, All Night," uh, "Suffragette City," and "Unskinny Bop," and "Look What the Cat Dragged In." Your mama don't dance, don't dance. Uh, so yeah, they, they they did their share of covers, and they were pretty good at them. So, uh, so yeah, I can't find any other ones, but yeah. Uh, so, color me surprised that I actually decided to. Uh, hang on to and, and pick up a two-disc hits uh, collection by Poison. Good stuff. Don't know if I am uh, if I like this one enough to go after their individual studio albums, maybe at some point. Then we have another two-disc uh, greatest hits collection. This is by a uh, R&B and soul singer named Gregory Porter, fantastic singer. And uh, yes, disc one is his, uh, his hits, and disc two is a uh, set full of duets with uh, everybody from Moby to Jamie Cullum uh, to... Uh, he, he does, like, uh, you know, I don't know what you call them. Uh, well, bl blended hits, I mean, or, or uh, duets with with deceased artists. Uh, Buddy Holly and Ella Fitzgerald. He does. I don't know how I feel about those, frankly. You know, um, kind of injecting your own vocals in to a, a song by an artist that's not around anymore. I don't know. Seems a little, a little bit grave robbery to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. What do you think? Um, then he does, uh, he does uh, duets with Laura Mvula and Liz Wright. So I'm totally there. Uh, Diane Reeves, Lala Hathaway, Julie London, Paloma Faith. So yeah, a great set of songs on here. The great hits, solo hits from his albums, and a disc of duets. I think some of them were taken from. Uh, various uh, sources. So, yeah. Gregory Porter, rather enjoy his stuff. I might seek out uh, uh, solo albums from him. Then we have a uh, the winner of season two, I think, of Canadian Idol, Kalen Porter, another Porter here. And this is his debut album. I think it's just self-titled, I believe. Uh, yes, good stuff. And, I mean, you look at this skinny kid with this young face, you would not believe, you know, if you've only seen a picture of him like this picture, you would not believe what kind of a voice comes out of this kid. Just a deep, throaty voice, and I just, I, I'm surprised he doesn't, you know, blow a, you know, have a hernia from singing like that. It's just a fantastic voice. And that's one thing that I like about him, is the fact that his voice is so, so separate from what he looks like. You know, it's just like you wouldn't imagine a voice like that coming out of this kind of kid. But uh, yeah, great stuff. And I'm not sure if I like his debut album. Oh, and another thing is, uh, he's also a violinist. He plays the violin, which he feature features on a couple of songs on each of his albums. And I'm not sure if I like his debut or his sophomore album, Wake Up Living, more. Uh, one of my favorite songs, Hooray, is on Wake Up Living. The video of that song is great. If, if you like funny music videos, look up Hooray, that's H-U-R-R-A-Y, by Kaylin Porter. It's, uh, the concept of the video is a Scrabble game with his grandmother. It's great. You've got to see it. And it's a well-done video, too. So, uh, but yeah, and, and, that, and it's also one of his more rocking songs. So yeah, he does, you know, pretty much, it's, it's pretty much rock. Um, yeah, not like... Uh, Probably much more rock than um, Clay Aiken, but uh, and Clay Aiken I think is another one. For some reason, I kind of equate Clay Aiken with Kalen Porter, in in as far as how looks are separate from how he sounds, if you get what I mean. But uh, yeah, I actually do think I like his sophomore album a little bit more. Um, Destination Where I Belong that's a really good song, and uh, Karma King is another really good one too. So. So yeah, but uh, yeah, check him out if you like uh, pop rock, basically. I've only got a few albums left, but I need a drink of water, sorry. <clears throat> so
So I guess this video is going to be about the same length as my other CD collection videos. This one I found at a store up in Salem that I was not very impressed with the store, but I did, you know, it was, it was very cluttered. It was, was my problem with it. Uh, hard to walk around in there and almost nothing was priced. You had to ask the guy, well, how much is this? And he'd tell you. So not the way to run a store in my opinion, but, but what do I know? But I found a few good things out of that store and this was one of them. Uh, it's called, what is it called? Uh, Same Old Life by a group called Pound, a rock band by the name of Pound. I had the CD many, many years ago, back in the, see, what is this? Uh, it is 19, 1999 was the copyright date. So I had it in the early 2000s, got rid of it. And, uh, but I saw it, you know, you know, I had completely forgotten about the CD. But then when I started looking at the track listing, uh, three or four of the songs I could remember the melodies or the, the choruses from the songs as soon as I read the, the names on them. So that uh, told me that it was time to pick up this album again, and I am very, very glad that I did and uh, brought, it in, brought it back into my collection. My World is a great song. Uh, so is Accident, uh, Crazy, and... Uh, Upside Down, that's another good one. So basically the the first half of the album has got some great, great songs on it. So yeah, I was very happy to have found that CD again. And uh, little, did, little did I know how much I was going to enjoy it again. Then we have, I believe, one of these was a gift from Noah. I can't remember which one. Presidents of the United States of America. This is their debut album, which of course is uh, from uh, Lump and... Peaches, yeah, both songs, Lump and Peaches, were off of this one. Bit of an, a bit of a weird band, but uh, they're fun. I gotta say, and so much fun, in fact, that uh, I, I think I picked this one up, and Noah gave me their, de their debut. This is Two by Presidents of the United States of America, their follow-up, and uh, it's, it's just as much fun as their debut is. I, I gotta say. What can I say? They're a little bit quirky. They kind of remind me of, actually, a little bit of Bare Naked Ladies. If Bare Naked Ladies were a little bit more punk, I guess. And then rounding out the, uh, to the today's chapter of my Hold On CD collection is an artist you might have heard of, Elvis Presley. <laughs> yes, this is a compilation of his Sun, uh, Sun Records hits. Of course, this was done on the uh, RCA label. But uh, yeah, I've, I've got a couple of his as well. You'll see, kicking off my next chapter, you'll see I've got a couple of his... Uh, classic early albums, and so I had to buy the uh, the Sun Records collection to uh, to augment that uh, those albums. So uh, there we go. Another 90 CDs uh, that I have revealed to you in my Hold On CD collection. Uh, can't wait for the next chapter, so that'll do it for today's chapter, chapter 16 of my Hold On CD collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos if you haven't yet, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.